Okay. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, this is a episode of my lazy podcast, <laughs> uh, New Paradigm Mastery, in which I interview people that are inspiring me, that are creating both their own new paradigms and therefore the larger paradigm that we're all co-creating, whether we know it or not. And today I have um, someone very dear to me, Russell J. Dunnick. And um, and we're going to start off uh, by talking about the wardrobe, the obvious thing. <laughs> when That's we great. Hopped on, I know when we hopped I love on. Your taste. This, <laughs> I know you have such good taste. When we hopped on this video, uh, like literally five minutes ago, we both just busted out laughing. <laughs> Uh, we got the uniform on, don't we? We got the uniform. And then I was like, <laughs> I literally just changed last minute. We're clearly having the same vibe. And then there was a short discussion about like, is anybody going to change? And Jay was like, are we just going to go with it? And I'm like, let's just go with it. Let's, let's just go with it. Not, <laughs> this is not a podcast about perfection or performance or trying to be anything other than we are. So, <laughs> Oh, that's great. We kind of look like something out of the matrix. So um, one of the reasons I'm so excited, I will give a very brief introduction and then I'm going to ask Jay to talk about, introduce himself, that I'm so excited about this uh, episode is I've known Jay for a long time in different lifetimes, both of us in former lifetimes, and he is creating a new paradigm around something that's near and dear to my heart, and that is money and personal finance. So um, I would love, Jay, if you want to talk a little bit about, well, first of all, um, my question to you is, well, if you want to introduce yourself, do you want to talk, say something short? And then I'm going to ask you some questions. Oh, sure. Yeah. So my name's Russell J. Dunnick, and uh, most people call me Jay, and there's a story behind that. <laughs> that maybe we'll get into. Uh, but I've always been fascinated by uh, by money. You know, this whole idea that we can exchange this thing for value. Uh, and so I went down a path of studying that and uh, that has led me to a, a couple careers, but it has also led me to some, some realizations about money that uh, is fascinating to me and, uh, and Stephanie uh, she has helped me get to those uh, those realizations, and I appreciate that a great deal. So I uh, worked in a number as a professional financial planner. Uh, I've worked in uh, currently working in raising funds for a not-for-profit and really been about wealth generation uh, my entire life and, and all the, the facets that go around around that. So so that's a brief, uh, brief introduction. Yeah, that... Um... That's actually how we met in former lives. Jay, as a professional um, financial planner for executives and wealthy people in general, of which I used to be one. <laughs> <laughs> and he would, we would do quarterly meetings and we would talk about investment strategies and stock purchases and like all that stuff. And, and like Jay, I've always been fascinated by money and that is completely reflected in my human design chart so i was kind of like woof okay i come by it honest um but also just felt like i don't know something felt off mm -hmm. you know the whole time we were doing it and um and so we reconnected after many years later like i think that was like what 15 years ago that we knew yeah. each other Right. And I just thought he was a really great, nice guy. And come to find out, he's got all this depth and and um, <laughs> these amazing, I think, ideas about what's possible um, for people with money. Um, I guess my first question for you, the one that I really am dying to ask is, what is it that you think isn't working in our current paradigm of of finance, money, economy, whatever you, whatever scale you want to talk about it, like what's not working? Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm coming from it like a former financial advisor and that structure that, that financial planners have investing in the stock market, saving for retirement, debt management, um, that, that whole wealth creation type of, of model. And I think what 
always troubled me when I was practicing as a financial advisor is despite working with people and going through all of the all the things that we were supposed to do, risk management, have a life insurance policy for this, make sure that you have your balance of stocks and bonds so that you can stomach you know, the market volatility and all of the planning, despite putting all of that in place for people, they still had anxiety and stress over money. And you would think after following the advice of a professional financial planner and working together with some people for years, that why wouldn't they get past that? Why would they still have this, this visceral reaction whenever the stock market fell 5% or 10%? And, and why would they panic? We've been through the planning. Like there was something there that was, as you put it, Stephanie, it was just off. And I didn't understand it at the time. Uh, and it, it took a number of years and took working in, uh, in not not profit fundraising to kind of put the connection to what that missing piece was. That is so fascinating. Yeah, it's almost like the more you have, the more you worry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. A little bit, right? Yeah. And the yes. way I always looked at it, the way it felt for me was like you're trying to create security in something that can't give you security. So there's always like, there's never enough. And I watched that in my own life. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just never enough. The first million, okay, well now the second, now the third, now the fourth. And there's always like a compulsion or a stress behind it, you know? Right, right. Um, so it's not the answer, right? <laughs> but if it's, it's not the answer, what is? <laughs> well, the... <laughs> heart-led money, the, the, the term obviously conveys thinking about listening to your heart. What is your intuitive gut feel, your, your heart's guidance telling you? And where the missing link or where I, I kind of figured this out and, and put all the pieces together was in, in working in not-for-profit fundraising, we're always trying to talk with donors and connect with their heart. We're always saying, what is their heart passion and does it match the um, the not-for-profit's mission, right? And when I witnessed people that were generous uh, with, uh, you know, charitably, there was a joy, there was a passion. And some people that were very generous, despite the fact that they're almost doing the opposite of what financial planners would say, they'd be taking money out of what would be considered their security yeah. to put toward charitable endeavors. So there was something they were tapping into there was with their heart. And so thinking about that and, and letting that ruminate uh, a little bit. Also, I realized that money, money is really an extension of us, uh, of, of our of our lives. We trade our time, we trade our attention, we trade our energy for money through work and through other economic endeavors. And so it's almost like there are little pieces of us that get put out outside of us because we're we're trading our consciousness, our attention for 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 money and to turn that over to something that is outside of us that then controls it it's kind of feeling like you're turning over part of your life for somebody else to control and to manage. And so it, it creates this uh, other forces or other people, other are, are working on or kind of directing that or inputting, impacting, that's what I'm looking for, are impacting the money. And because it's not connected to us anymore, that's where the stress comes from. Mm -hmm. And so it's really about reconnecting people with their money. And how do you help people do that? Well, that is it rather than because we're still in this financial structure. There's still markets, there are still banks, uh, you know, that's that still is what it is. But as far as where does the where does it where's the decision made about how money is handled or managed? Is it made outside of you? Does it really take into consideration what it is that will make you most fulfilled, what your full expression of your life is? Uh, or is it because you're supposed to save X percent in order to get your match at your employer in order to be financially wise so that you can save for retirement and at some point get to a, a stage where you're sitting on the porch in a rocking chair and 
just doing the thing that everybody says you're supposed to be doing, right? So, uh, so that's the the key, I think, is shifting the focus of the decision, where the decision is coming from, from outside outside influences to your internal influence or your internal guidance. It's like when I log into my 401k at Fidelity, what's left of it, and and like punch in the little numbers. Do you have what you need for retirement? And yeah. you like fill it out and it tells you, oh my God, you don't, you're gonna, you're gonna die or whatever. Versus like trusting myself or trusting, um, like you said, my own heart, you know, and what I'm meant to do. And like, for me personally, as a client of yours, <laughs> It's like learning to, to trust that me knowing I don't want to be sitting on a porch um, just collecting money and not doing anything right. Uh, right. is not who I'm meant to be. Right. You know, I'm not saying that's not for some people, but I know, you know that's primarily why I got divorced was because there was such a misalignment in that knowing. I was like, no, I want to work till the day I die. Like, I don't yeah. want to just sit on a porch. I love what I do. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And there's this, there's this phrase that we would use in financial planning. So financial planning industry, there, there's so many different ways to make money. People selling products, selling annuities, selling life insurance, selling mutual funds and, and all this. And whenever somebody would specialize in one thing, financial planners, you know, and I was guilty of it, we would joke and say, well, when everything, when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. <laughs> and so to certain people in the financial planning profession, whatever they're selling, that is automatically the answer to whatever financial problem somebody has. Uh, and so that, that that was always troubling to me because everybody yeah, like is there's a there's an a, almost a conflict of interest. Yeah. A little right. bit. Like there's there in a there's there's an investment in a specific um product, right? Versus looking at it from like I have no like I, I imagine you would do. I have no investment in what you do. I'm he, just here to help you find out what the right thing is for you. Right. And, and like what you were saying about sitting on the porch uh, in the rocking chair is not what's for me because everybody is so is uniquely designed. And, you know, they're like what you say, you know, everybody's a snowflake uh, unique in their own uh, way they've been created. There's there's an infinite number of ways that someone can manage their money. But yet there are only so many financial planning solutions. There's a fixed number of financial planning solutions, yet there's an infinite number of ways that people could design the use of their money. Yeah. And in a way, like me, we were all conditioned yeah. by society, by our parents. Like I look back and and I'm not angry at my parents because they wanted me to have a good, stable job and a good, stable marriage because... My mom didn't finish high school. So of course that's the next step. Like she wants me to have more or better than yeah. what she had, but it's her interpretation of it. And we also live in such a different world. Like the world is changing mm -hmm. so fast now. I think that yeah. a lot of these institutions, and this is bringing in kind of the new paradigm there, like each person has their paradigm, but then there's also the paradigm we're co-creating, but the old paradigm is crumbling because it doesn't serve us any longer. It's not that there's necessarily anything wrong. It's just yeah. these institutions and systems and even financial products were created during a different era. And mm -hmm. so now we're entering this new era and these things either have to be cr crumble or destroyed or re-envisioned, re you know, yeah, to be able definitely. to support us. Definitely. So I would love to talk. So I feel like there's two different um, hats to wear. There's one of like people who might want to work with you mm -hmm. um, and what your message is to them. And then there's also the wearing this hat of being someone who's creating a new paradigm, who's a visionary. Mm -hmm. And I want to speak to both of those. And so sure. speaking to the visionary, because I feel like what you're doing is incredibly visionary um, I'd love to know how you knew you were meant to do this. Ooh. How, when, like, how, how, 
why you? Why are, how are, how did you know I have to do something? I think it's been a, ever since I decided to go down the path of studying money. So I went to uh, college, you know, went the business route and there was always this piece with financial planning where it was this striving to get to a pure offering where there's no conflict of interest. Mm. And so a couple models, early models, um, and you know, of course I'll, I'll pick on stockbrokers. I don't know that there are a lot of stockbrokers around anymore, but back when I was studying, they would charge a commission for placing stock trades. So it was a very clear, almost like when you go into a, a Ford car dealer, you expect them to try to sell you a Ford car. They're not going to sell you a Chevy or a Toyota. You know the game, but there was this aspect of stockbrokers where, yeah, they the more they sold, the more money they made. Uh, and, and so that didn't feel right. And so then I kept kind of refining that. And then I found, you know, this idea of um, fee-based financial planners where you give advice for a fee and then you can make you know, your advice based on whatever is available to people in all financial products. You don't have to try to sell a certain type of product. So, okay, that's another level deeper. And, I, you know, it's just this continual process of refining and going deeper and deeper. And then I got to the point where I was invited to be a, um, a partner and buy in as a partner of that financial planning. And that was the point. That was the inflection point or the breaking point, if you will, <laughs> where I couldn't sleep at night. And, and I was so torn because this was supposed to be what I was working toward. This was the peak. This was the culmination. Why was I so internally conflicted? And it felt so wrong. And at the time, I didn't really understand it. I was just probably relieving the pain I had because I couldn't sleep at night. And so I decided to, you know, I was so conflicted. I'm like, I can't do it. I can't go down this path because I know it will lead to or there's something more that, that I need to find that's not going to be found on this path. And so I declined it. And uh, I, I knew then, and that led to going into the not-for-profit and, you know, the next level. So to answer your question, I think it was this continuous, like, looking, 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 and almost it kept, while I was looking outside, when I made the decision not to buy into as a partner, all of a sudden that shifted to, okay, now I'm looking inside for the answers because I've explored all those answers outside. And, you know, in the not-for-profit world, that's a, that's a little bit more of a familiar place to, to do those sorts of introspective type of uh, reflections. And so, yeah, I think it's, it was just this continuous, it's not quite right. You, you find something a little better. Okay, that's better, but it's still not quite there. And it's um, continuous uh, searching until you, you get there. <laughs> so in essence, heart led money, your business was born from your own heart. Like yeah, you it, not absolutely. being like your heart, you know, yelling at you and <laughs> you not being able to deny what you felt right. inside, which is amazing such like that's just a purity of you know of conception and you know we've worked together so as you're sharing all of this i'm just remembering your your human design chart and and how integrity and those those blocks are part of your design mm -hmm. and so there's this natural um it feels natural to me of outcropping of you um creating this mm -hmm. Um, from who you were meant to be. And I think we all have those inflection points. It's like, just do we listen? Mm -hmm. You know, are we able to listen when, right. when something isn't in alignment and have the courage, like what courage it took for you to turn that down? <laughs> People are like, are you crazy? Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. So then in what would you say that your vision is for your business? Like what, what do you want people to, to experience, to, to have, to end up, you know, as a result of, of working with you and applying these ideas? So when I did financial planning, I cannot remember one single 
artist that I had as a client. Okay. Like a painter or, yeah. or somebody like that. And so the vision would be, you know, worked with a lot of business people, of course, business owners, executives, that's those, those types. And those are all great professions. Those are all people that are passionate about their work. But the vision that I have for Heart Led Money is if, if a painter can get to the point where they are just as comfortable or just as skilled managing their money and making money decisions as they are with the paintbrush on the canvas, because that's where that's coming from. The, the, the painter is painting from their heart. I've, I've known several painters and you can just tell. Uh, it's the same thing about songwriters and, and musical people that are blessed musically. It's coming from the heart. There's no question about it. So if I can help people make money decisions that just like a painter paints a portrait from that place, mm -hmm. that's what I want to do. And is there also a uh, room for, I, I, I always, I think of things in human design and like painters and things like that tend to be more uh, what I would say on the, on the right orientation, the right mm -hmm. orientation, human design talks about the brain's design and the mind's design and right tends to be receptive and tends to be people that don't, aren't naturally um, called to work with the financial structures we have. Whereas the left, which is logical, focused, you know, that's how our society is, is designed. Um, so I guess, is, is there also room for those of us that are more left facing to discover our hearts and to begin to make different choices as well? Absolutely. So the the analogy of the painter was to probably go right down into the left brain person's yeah. brain, you know, to say, oh, wow, okay, let me, I don't quite understand how that works. Let me, let me understand that better. I think for the left brain, for the, the linear thinker, as you described, it's the, the vision would be, let's create a bridge from how you're making decisions now that are causing stress, even though you feel like, oh, I've got my emergency fund or, oh, I've got my retirement. I've got all these yeah, things. Me, me. <laughs> but, I'm still, I'm myself. <laughs> but I'm still stressed about money. Yeah. And, and let's explore that. Let's figure out why that is. Mm -hmm. And, and then there's another piece to the, the vision of heart led money is, what do you, what is the state of your life that you want? Uh, and how do you build a bridge to, to get there? How do you, and, and that may mean a job with more money. It may mean a different job. It may mean generating resources other than, than cash or other than the traditional income. It may mean reorganizing your finances in such a way that you get to that place of, I am, living a life where I'm fully expressing who I am. And that is fascinating. How that is so different with everybody. And yeah. I honestly cannot imagine anyone else who could do this, but you, because it's, there's this, um, you know, openness, this, this sense of possibility with you that, no other financial planner is going to have because they're so indoctrinated into the system that they're only going to see it in a very limited way. And mm -hmm. yet you bring this whole, like, you know, instead of here, it's like here right. and being able to meet people. And like my own personal story is, you know, a story of letting go of wealth in favor of prosperity and the, the, mm -hmm distinction is prosperity is always having a little, always having more than what you need, but not accumulating and putting the responsibility on money to keep you safe and secure. Um, and for me, once I quit being a chemical engineer and started coaching, my desire for uh, material things like totally shifted. I was like, I don't need this big house. I don't need a fancy car. It was like those things were compensations because yeah. I wasn't fully expressed, as you say. Right. You know, it, it, it helped with it helped with the stress. Yeah, totally. But only <laughs> um only For temporarily. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it helped, it didn't solve. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Oh, this is so beautiful. I feel so inspired. Um, 
Yeah, and I, let ahead. me add to that is those those pools of money, and every financial advisor will tell you that they may use the analogy of buckets or you know pools of money, um, like retirement accounts or investment accounts, savings accounts, you know, all these things that people stock up and stockpile. I love to go hiking. And uh, I recently had, a, uh, about a year ago, it was right out a year ago, my son wanted to go hiking in the Great, uh, Great Smoky Mountains and wanted to backpack. Like, okay, I've never done this, but let's, let's do it. So for the first time in my life, I figured out like how to get the water, you know, how to filter your own water. And one of the first things they say is be very cautious of standing water that is just sitting there that's not flowing because that's it can harbor, you know, much larger amounts of bacteria. It's not as healthy, it's more contaminated because it's not flowing. And so I, I really feel like people completely misunderstand, not misunderstand, they underestimate their ability to generate income even in their retirement years. And, and income is that inflow. And so if you can balance the inflow with the outflow, then you're in that flow state. Whereas when you're working so hard in your younger years to accumulate the pools, those pools get contaminated like stagnant water and that's where the stress comes from. So it's more about balancing the flow. I love that. Yeah. Um, I would love to know specifically for you what blocks you have encountered in creating this new business. Like, you know, what have you had to overcome even in yourself? Like the things that, you know, as your clients, we have to overcome too. <laughs> yeah. The first one was, uh, and I love, Thank you for introducing me as Russell J. Dunnick because that was the block. My, I've always gone by my middle name. It's the name my parents always called me. And there was always this almost sense of shame with my first name because, because nobody used it. When people found out about it, they would tease me about it and they would laugh about it. And Russell was not a common name back in, I don't think back in the 1980s. So I never really liked it. I never liked my own name. And so that was that was a block as I do a creative endeavor to expose who I am to the world. If I can't even accept my own first name, that's the first place. That's the first block, you know, that, that of course you and I worked on. And that was that was huge. And so I went so far as to say, I'm just gonna put it on my website. It's uh, the domain is russelljdunnick.com, you know, what better way? And and so uh, people still call me Jay. I don't, you don't have to uh, refer to me as the full name, but it's, it's, yeah, that was the first block. And then I would say the second one is just fear of criticism mm -hmm. because this is so far, as you described, different than what all those people, all the people that I knew and still respect to do financial planning, it's so different. I know it's it's going to be a magnet for criticism, comments, and some of it may even be mean-spirited because it, it's totally breaking up the model uh, if people embrace this. And it's not my intent to, to bust up any business model, but I do know that, that there will be criticism in that. And so having the inner strength to be able to receive that and be okay with it and to be okay with that's okay if, if folks are upset at the the apple cart getting tipped over that's part of it that's part of the process and it doesn't change who i am and it doesn't change what i'm doing that is so beautiful i um that's something i resonate with as you know i love to work with people who are brave enough to create their own new paradigms in the service of creating a new paradigm for all of us. And there is a, there's a courage that it takes to be willing to follow what feels true for you and to follow your convictions in the unique way that only you can. And, um, and of course you inspire me, um, you know, by you doing that and watching you do that. Um, super inspirational for me too. So um, as if people are interested in 
like reaching out or where, how do you work with people? Like what's what, like, if I'm like, Oh, this guy resonates with me, what do I do? <laughs> well, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a process that is unique as you can imagine, uh, but it involves just sitting down and talking about uh, probably for about an hour or so. Well, where are you and where do you want to go and what have been some of the past, you know, issues with money and where are the stressors? And first of all, just to see if there's a good fit there. And if there is, then we we put together a mutually beneficial, um, you know, scope of uh, uh, of a project to to work together to to get to the place where there's no more stress about money, and you you're confident you're making those financial decisions on your own or or maybe with the help of someone who knows about. IRAs and, and all of the, the rules and regulations, that's still important to know that information, but helping then helping you to shift from making decisions based on the outside advice mm-hmm. to inside uh, guidance. So there's a difference, outside advice, inside guidance. Mm-hmm. You can still listen to outside advice. There's nothing wrong with that but the decision needs to come from the inside guidance so take that into consideration but the final authority is you yeah i think we had that conversation when we were talking about doing the podcast of counsel it was like yeah lawyers financial advisor advisors you don't have to do what they say nope nope. and they have a a fiduciary responsibility to give you specific you know advice and then it's up to you to take it or not. But so many right. people forget that and they think I have to do what they said. Same right. with the doctor. Like, honestly, um, at what point do we become sovereign? And for me, that is a huge part of the paradigm I'm creating. And the people um, that I want to work with are people that are that want to become sovereign, to want to depend on their own inner guidance. I call it the, the inner authority. Everybody has it. Everybody has it. Um, access to this compass inside mm-hmm. we've just been conditioned um, to not listen to it right yeah yeah and, and that's that, that's something that is unique with with every person it's going to the, the project would look different for everybody so there's no set time frame there's no set uh, it's just whatever is best for uh, for each individual person and let me also add, I'm specifically passionate about if someone has what I would call a passion project. So there's something that, and I like to talk about, what was it when you were a kid that you always wanted to do? Or what, what, what's, what's in there that you haven't done yet uh, for whatever reason? And let's talk about that and let's figure out if it's not within the current budget. Let's figure out how to uh, create that wealth to make that happen or create an environment where that can can happen for you. I think that's such a great starting point because it's inspirational. Everybody has something inside of them, some hidden desire, you know, something they've wanted to do, but just have not believed it was possible. And for a lot of people, money is the reason. Like money gets, mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. money is the excuse we all use. I don't have the money. I don't have the yep. time. Right. It's a convenient excuse, isn't it? It's a convenient excuse. Yeah. <laughs> and it can also be the way out. Right. Um, is there anything else you want me to ask you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think you covered it. It's it's such a joy and a pleasure to uh, uh, to have the conversation. It's um, it's inspirational. So thank you. Yeah, I, I could talk to you all day. So we may do this again at some point. Um, Absolutely. But uh, I will just let everybody know, I will, it, this will be on YouTube. I'm doing, a, like I said, a lazy podcast, which means just when I feel inspired by somebody, because I'm not going to force myself to be productive or do it on a regular basis. But I will put um, the information um, in the description of the video for everyone who wants to connect with Jay. And uh, I'll put his website there. And okay. Um, I guess I can't think of anything else. It's Very been good. so awesome. So I yeah. will, um, we're going to talk about when we'll post this. And if you guys have any questions, just make comments. And if, um, 
and we'll answer them, whoever the appropriate person is to answer. Okay, thank Very you. Good. Thank you.